Chapter 6 Bakugu's nose twitched. It twitched again and a crease crept into the sleep-smoothed space between his eyebrows. Something was tickling his nose. And his mouth. And his chin, for that matter. The crease was threatening to evolve into a frown as he cracked an eye open and, for one sleep-addled moment, wondered if he'd fallen asleep in a shrubbery. He closed his eyes as he yawned and the greenery tickled his face again. Bakugu had to turn his head away as he sneezed. Bless you, Kakin, came a muffled, sleepy mumble from under his arm. Izuku. Bakugu grumbled in response as his eyes closed again and he began to drift back to sleep. Izuku. Wait. He froze. Izuku? Bagu's eyes flew open. He quickly pulled his head back to refocus on the mass of green that was inches from his face. He remembered Auntie's words from the day before, about how toddler Izuku always wanted to be close to someone, never wanting to be put down. He'll be the same at bedtime, she said. Izuku had climbed into bed with him during the night. His head was on Bakugu's upper arm and was curled into his chest. Bakugu dragged his free hand down his face, he'd thought it would be enough that there was someone else in the room through the night, but apparently not. Judging by how much of Izuku's hair had been in his face when he woke up fucking hell, was I cuddling him? I hope to fuck the nerd doesn't remember any of this. Bakugu groaned, he certainly didn't remember any disturbance in the night at least, and he usually woke at the slightest disturbance, that was partly why he made sure to be in bed so early. He was not about to admit to anyone that he actually felt better rested than he had in who knows how long. He glanced at the alarm clock. Ten minutes before the it went off. Fucking typical. As gently as possible he extricated his arm from under Izuku's head. New, Izuku mumbled into the pillow. Bakugu huffed a laugh as he rubbed the sleep from his own eyes. He lightly poked the toddler in the side, who giggled. Why aren't you in your bed, eh? Bakugu rumbled, his voice was still asleep it seemed. Coffee. The giggling stopped and Izuku rolled to look at him, his green eyes wide and sad, I had a nightmare, Kakin. Bakugu noted the way how still Izuku had gone, hands clasped together, just like yesterday while in the principal's office. Any frustration he might have been feeling at the invasion of his personal bubble was quelled by the look on the little boy's face. I asked if I could, and you said okay. Izuku added, worry thick in his voice. Bakugu frowned slightly, he honestly did not remember any sort of conversation happening but that didn't matter right now, instead he softly asked, do you want to tell me about it? Izuku shook his head fervently. You okay now? Izuku nodded this time. Good. Okay, you stay put and play while I shower then we'll get you washed up and dressed. Oh, okie dokie, Kakin, Izuku struggled through a yawn. He wasn't awake enough to stop himself reaching out and ruffling Izuku's bedhead, making the curls even wilder than before. Either someone had turned off his temper or getting a good night's sleep really was all it was cracked up to be. As he rolled out of bed he grabbed both his and Izuku's phones and snapped a quick picture of Izuku all sleepy-eyed and fluffy-haired, and up to his chin in blankets. On his way to the bathroom he thanked any deity that might be listening for the fact that Izuku seemed to have retained the ability to control his bladder while asleep. It took a while to get the toddler to brush his teeth and to get dressed especially as, when Bakugu left the bathroom toweling his hair, he found that Izuku had burrowed back under the blankets and was sound asleep once more. He sighed. Is this why the nerd always nearly misses breakfast? Finally they were headed downstairs to the kitchen, some of the class were already up and about and somebody was cooking breakfast. Izuku sniffed the air. You hungry? Bakugu asked him, already knowing the answer. Eat, sleep, get into trouble. Nerds always been the same. Hmm. They spotted Kirishima at the stove, now, Kirishima couldn't cook for shit and Bakugu had told him as much on multiple occasions. However, he had to begrudgingly admit that the redhead could make one breakfast item incredibly well. Pancakes, yelled Izuku, hopping from one foot to the other. 
A few of the still sleepy students jumped at the noise, and Kirishima glanced quickly over his shoulder. Morning, he called, waving his spatula. I'm doing enough for everyone. Bacon in yours, man? TCH, duh. Too fu of udging sweet otherwise, Bakugu fumbled over the impending F bomb and wrinkled his nose, shaking his head. Fucking fudge? What am I? Six? Thankfully, no one but Kirishima heard, who snorted as he mixed more batter. At Bakugu's suggestion, to keep him from getting under Kirishima's feet, Izuku had braved the common room and was now sitting on the floor with Todoroki. Half and half was alternating between producing miniature ice flurries in one palm and the smallest of dancing fires in the other, much to Izuku's fascination. You're scowling, whispered Kirishima, placing a small pile of pancakes in front of him. Fuck you, he growled back but started scowling at his pancakes instead. Coffee, he thought again. As if he had summoned it, a travel mug slid into view next to his plate of pancakes. The most welcome aroma wafting through the little hole in the lid. You're welcome. Hiroshima called over his shoulder as he took a plate across to Izuku. Hiroshima had put a lot of effort into becoming a member of the incredibly exclusive club that was capable of brewing Bakugu his morning coffee. The only three other people were, himself, his dad, and Izuku. To this day he didn't know how Izuku knew, but at this point he was practically a founding member of Bakugu's imaginary coffee club. Shoveling bacon pancakes into his mouth, he tried not to think about where he'd be if either Izuku or Kirishima had ever given up on him. Bakugu refilled his travel mug before heading out with Izuku and Kirishima in tow. He had the backpack with water bottles and snacks in and Izuku had decided that he preferred the extra height that Kirishima's shoulders afforded. The tiny pang of jealousy had both surprised him and not mixed well with the pancakes. Where are we going, Kaken? Izuku called from his lofty perch. Bakuga turned, walking backwards in front of the other two, we're going to do some hero training, he paused to watch Izuku's face shine, and you get to join in. Izuku Dam near toppled off Kurishima's shoulders in his excitement, luckily the red head had an iron grip on his legs. Hiroshima shook his head at Bakugu, bro, don't get him so worked up he hurts himself before we even get there. He'll be fine, he dismissed. He will be fine. It didn't take them long to get to ground Beta and Aizawa was already there, a crate of training supplies next to him. Mr. Zawa's here too? Izuku gasped. Yep, he's our teacher after all, said Kirishima as he lowered Izuku to the floor, whose feet were already moving. As soon as they touched down, he ran to Bakugu and began tugging on his hand as they approached. Yesterday Mr. Zawa was telling us about his quirk and, Izuku paused to take a deep breath, and. Hekanere sa quirks just belukan gat people beauty stops when heb links and scarfus and ten or mal scarfatese, aye. Izuku's face screwed up as he tried to remember. It's a binding cloth, supplied Bakugu, setting his travel mug down on a bench. Yeah, yeah, a bing cloth. And and he can capture people with itens really good in close combat dash. I'm glad to see you remember so much of what I told you, Midoriya, as I was low, tired voice interrupted. Izuku went pink, but he nodded, eyes fixed on the pro hero. Aizawa gave a slight nod back and then looked to Kurishima. We'll start with a basic strength test. Tug of war, you and Midoriya. Kirishima nodded and immediately headed to the crate. Me and Kiri? Izuku squeaked, clearly confused. Aizawa's eyes flicked to Bakugu who knelt down to Izuku's level. You remember yesterday, when Kirishima had to go back to class and you wouldn't let go, he asked, Izuku nodded. And then Kirishima activated his quirk dash. And I pushed him away because it scared me, Izuku whispered, barely audible. So, he did know what happened. You did, Bakugu swallowed his surprise, and yesterday when you ran away with the notebook. Remember? You jumped off the table to run after Kirishima? It broke, Izuku mumbled, I broke the table. And I pushed Kiri. His brow pulled together and his eyes began to shine. 
Oh no. Quick, think of something. Bakugu sat on the floor properly with his legs stretched out either side of the toddler. Yep. You broke a table and you pushed Kiri. Really far, he confirmed. Aizawa took a step forward as Izuku sniffed, but Bakugu shook his head. His teacher stopped and watched with curiosity. I, I didn't mean to, Kaken. Izuku hiccuped, tears beginning to fall in earnest. I know, buddy. You don't break stuff and push people around. That's my job. Izuku giggled wetly, shaking his head. Bakugu patted the floor and Izuku sat down facing him. So, what do you think is happening? he asked quietly. Izuku frowned, what do you mean? Well, a table is really hard to break. And Kirishima is really hard to push around. I've tried, he grinned as Izuku giggled again, especially as far as you did yesterday. You'd have to be really, really strong to do both. The tears had stopped, and Izuku rubbed at his face with his sleeve. I remember green, Izuku looked up at Bakugu, who just nodded at him. Kaken, the little boy grabbed his hand and whispered with an intensity only four years olds can muster. Yeah? Bakugu tried to stop his grin from getting any wider. Am I getting a quirk? Izuku breathed, am I super strong, Kaken? I think so, Kido, he whispered back, Mr. Aizawa does too. That's why he asked us to come here today. And that's why me and Kiri are doing tug-o-war. Izuku pointed to Kirishima, who had his arms full of rope and had stopped to listen to the little boy's revelation. They all nodded. Izuku seemed to realize how tall Kirishima was at that moment. He leant into Bakugu and whispered, Kaken. How strong is Kiri? I'm super strong too, little man. Kirishima announced when he overheard with his fists on his hips. Izuku only looked to Bakugu for confirmation while Kirishima sputtered indignantly. He's pretty strong too. You'll have to give it your all, Bakugu admitted seriously. Okie dokie, Kaken. I will, Izuku stood up proudly and mimicked Kirishima's pose before running off to where the red head was now laying out the rope. He turned halfway and called back, Kaken. Now we can be heroes together. Aizawa was helping Kirishima mark the midpoint and so no one else saw Bakugu smile. He picked up his travel mug of coffee off of the bench and went to stand next to Aizawa to watch the tug of war test. His teacher was clutching his own mug but he had removed the lid, the steam rising close to his face. Bakugu quite liked Aizawa, as much as he liked anyone. His teacher had defended him on many occasions when others would not have done. He pushed people to become the best they could be and he was not afraid of giving a harsh lesson to get them there. He had been on the receiving end of his fair share to know. They also, apparently, both opted for black coffee in the morning. Aizawa hadn't reacted at all to his approach and Bakugu wasn't certain that he hadn't fallen asleep standing up. He'd done it before. More than once. It was honestly impressive. So, er. How's your coffee? Bakugu asked, by way of checking his teacher's consciousness without startling him. Aizawa still didn't move, but grumbled, it's like making love in a canoe. Huh? Bakugu exclaimed. What the fuck? When Aizawa didn't immediately answer he decided to take a sip of his own drink. He could not have said what I thought he said. Fucking close to water, muttered Aizawa. Bakugu spat his coffee out in a tremendous, cartoon-like arch and nearly choked on what was left in his mouth. With his hands on his knees, he looked up with watery eyes to see Aizawa grinning at him. The bastard waited for me to have my mouth full. Language, he rasped at his teacher, acutely aware that that was normally Aizawa's line. It's a Saturday, get off my back, Aizawa deadpanned back, still grinning. He straightened up and watched Kirishima show Izuku how to stand properly, feet apart with a bend to his knees, then run back to pick up his own end of the rope. You handled that very well by the way, his teacher drawled. Bakugu only shrugged in response as Kirishima and Izuku began to pull against each other. 
How did you know what would work? He sighed. Izuku's always been the same. He needs to figure it out himself before he'll accept what's staring him in the face. You know him very well, said Aizawa quietly. He knows me better, I think. I'm just winging this, Bakugu admitted. Izuku had taken a couple of steps forward. Stand your ground, Izuku, he called. Okie dokie, Kaken. Where's my encouragement, bro? You'll get it if you need it, dipstick. Close one, muttered Aizawa, don't underestimate your value in this situation, Bakugu. Izuku was taking his words to heart and had anchored himself solidly. Kirishima was leaning back on the rope but getting nowhere. Start pulling, buddy. Bakugu shouted again, only half listening to his teacher, underestimate my what? Never mind, keep doing what you're doing. Izuka took the tiniest step backwards and Kirishima had to inch forwards. He's moving Izuku. Keep going. Bakugu watched as Kirishima's feet slid along the ground as the toddler kept pulling backwards. Green lightning was spitting and sparking around the little boy. The movement stopped as Kirishima activated his own quirk to help dig his feet in. They were both straining and leaning back on the rope. He paced alongside feeling as tense as the rope itself. His eyes slid from Kirishima to Izuku and, as if in slow motion, he watched the little boy's face screw up in pain as the rope slipped through his hands and he toppled over backwards. Bakugu was running before Izuku hit the floor. Fuck no, please. 